some of the folks that will leave, they're leaving out of embarrassment because they make their products outside. And I've been lecturing them, including the gentleman that you're referring to, about you have to bring it back to this country. You can't do it necessarily in Ireland and all of these other places. You have to bring this work back to this country. That's what I want. I want manufacturing to be back into the United States so that American workers can benefit. President Trump slamming the four CEOs today who resigned from his American Manufacturing Council following his handling of the aftermath of the Charlottesville attack just moments ago after President Trump's press conference, a fifth member, AFL-CIO President Richard Trumka, tweeted his resignation from the council. Here to discuss, Fox News political contributor Tammy Bruce, One Empire Group co-founder and managing director, and the strategic analyst for the New York GOP, John Burnett, and Pablo Manriquez back with us. Good to see all three of you again. Good to see you again, Lauren. Um, Tammy, mm. these executives, these CEOs are on these advisory councils mm -hmm. to the president to advise him. So when you decide that you no longer want to be part of that effort to change things, mm -hmm. are, are you making a mistake? Are uh, you missing the calling? I, I think you are, but then you're also dealing with uh, men and women. Uh, who deal with boards of directors, their shareholders, there's pre political pressure from the outside. And that's what makes some of these complaints a bit disingenuous. That in fact they say, oh, you know, it's uh, political stuff is dis disturbing all of this. And of course we're supposed to infer that they don't believe the president has the country's best interests in mind. Well, P Donald Trump has been Donald Trump for 70 years. <laughs> they all generally, they've known him. And so by their statements themselves, they they're reinforcing how politicized this environment is. And that's the problem. It's what President Trump been speaking about is how toxic the environment is, that political violence is unacceptable, that, that all of this has to be dealt with as a whole. Right. Not quite sure uh, what, what their problem is, except that they're listening to the politicized arguments against the president, and that's unfortunate. John, what do you make of the thought we ran at the beginning, the soundbite from the president? He essentially said, you know, these executives who are quitting the council, they're not even doing things here in America the way they're supposed to be. What do you make of what he said? Well, that argument might be true, but it's lost in what his comments were on Saturday, the follow-up on, on Monday, as well as the press conference today. Which was but, supposed to be about infrastructure. Exactly. Who's talking about that now? But, but here's the problem. You know, I understand the president's comments in terms of uh, not being clear and direct on Saturday. Mm -hmm. He sort of like did a Peggy Fleming in terms of skated around using you know, certain names in terms of white nationalism and white supremacy. However, you know, I think the, the, the CEOs, they've taken a lot. They're tired of explaining certain things to their employees, to their constituents and other key stakeholders. So that way when, when, when Trump actually, well I should say Mr. Pre uh, Mr. President, waited mm -hmm. 48 hours to make the follow-up statement, they deemed it as not good enough. However, he was very clear on Monday. The, mis the possible mistake right. was there was no press conference on Saturday and Monday. So, yeah. in terms of infrastructure week, it, the, the, the media and America wants to know what he thinks. Instead of quitting the councils, Pablo, is there a better way to do this? I want to uh, bring to you something the Walmart CEO said. Um, as we watched the events and the response from President Trump over the weekend, we too felt that he missed a critical opportunity to help bring our country together by unequivocally rejecting the appalling actions of white supremacists. And he goes on, Pablo, do you think this would be a better response instead of quitting to call out the president? I do, actually, I do. And especially given the, that we now know that by quitting the council, the stocks of those companies have been taking a hit today. Um, as a businessman, yeah, I think that he, they could do a lot more damage, quote, you know, I guess that's a political way to put it, but move their agenda forward more effectively if, um, if, if they were in, you know, at the table as opposed to now, you know, being part of their own, you know, universe again. So, yeah, I, I would agree wholeheartedly. But I'd also say that this is a bellwether. You're going to see now moving forward toward the 2018 midterm that there's going to be a dividing line, I think, in the Republican side of politics. Obviously, uh, some of the other guests on the panel here would, would, would be able to verify that or not. Mm -hmm. Whereas people are going to start ditching this whole Make America Great Again movement because it isn't clearly establishing itself as a movement that can win without white supremacism. And I think that that's important, that it needs to draw that line in the sand.
Uh, t Tammy wants to respond. I'll give you five seconds. No, five no seconds. Look, that the attempt to conflate all of this with conservatives uh -huh. or an idea of making America great again is one of the major problems that Americans mm -hmm. are rejecting. I mean, that kind of conflation to attempt to smear everyone right. who supports the president yeah. is a real shame oh, and, right. and Tammy, uh, I, unfortunate. I'm not trying to conflate it, though. we got to go, guys. Yeah. I'm sorry, Tammy, no. John, Pablo, thank you.